Okay, so tonight I read Crosby this book that he got for his birthday um, that I had never read before, and it's called The Day the Crayons Quit. And listen, if you know me, you know that I'm barely literate, right? Like, I can't tell a gerund from a fermata. So this book is great. It's like my favorite kid's book of all time. It's basically a string of grievances written in letter form by a box of crayons. It's so good. It's so good. Okay. <laughs> so if you, if you have kids or whatever, like if you're kid people, or if you have an attentive pet, the day the crayons quit, seriously, it's so good. All right. More important things. I saw a really good post, uh, this evening from my friend Bobby at Armadillo Ale. Um, basically, so the first shutdown was really bad, right? Like it was bad. Um, but at least, you know, that was like our point when everybody was really, really gung-ho about supporting local businesses and doing everything they could. And also there was a little bit of government, like, funding helping things out, right? So, like, Armadillo, for example, got a PPP loan, and they were able to, like, bring their furloughed staff back on and pay them. Uh, and as the state slowly reopened, you know, they were opening their patio, and they were still trying to be as safe as they could, requiring people to wear PPEs and all that kind of stuff. Um, then... You know, out of the blue, the governor signed his executive order and basically reclosed the bars with no real warning. And so now Armadillo and places like it are kind of freaking out, you know, because they're closed again. There's no support. There's no um, there's no more like funding available to like help them, like resources to help them through this thing. So I think at this point, we're all pretty well aware that the government on any level is not really going to do a lot for us. Like they're going to do the minimum amount of effort to keep people safe, much less keep local businesses afloat. So what that means is it's up to us. Okay. We're going to have to buy lots of beer now. That's, that's really where we're at. Okay. So, uh, um, whether it is like directly from, you know, breweries or whether it's like from retailers, which like here in Denton, we have amazing retailers like Bearded Monk and Midway that are helping keep the local breweries alive and keeping themselves alive and keeping distributors alive as long as we're buying stuff. So if you are capable, if you're in a position to buy lots of alcohol <laughs> um, and food, because there's restaurants too that are also freaking out and having a hard time, but I'm focusing on bars today. Uh, so whatever you can possibly do, this is the time to stock up, right? This is time to play <laughs> Armageddon and, uh, you know, and start stock filling that basement up with, you know, everything that's going to keep you alive over the next three years that you're trapped underground or whatever. Uh, so yeah, get lots of beer because I really, really want these places to be around when we get through this thing, you know? And, um, you know, and Bobby said it in his post. It's like, if we don't, if, if we don't support them, if we don't like buy lots of beer, <laughs> then, uh, they will not make it. Like it's, it's a scary time for people who have local businesses right now, especially places that are bars because they're super discriminated against in terms of like government stuff, right? Like churches are open, but bars are closed. It's, we don't have to get into that. <laughs> Just, uh, the point of this is buy lots of booze. <laughs> Because <laughs> we got to keep those guys around. It's important. Okay? So, <sighs> drink one for me. Drink one for Bobby. I'll see you tomorrow. Mm -hmm.